All right, very good. So thanks very much for the Brain Foundation for uh, having us here. Um, so this is work we've been working on for a number of years. We've completed four MTT studies for autism. This is our uh, second one on adults with autism we'll be sharing it with you today. The big picture is that all four of our studies have been very positive and showed great safety. I want to acknowledge um, both, as we already mentioned, um, uh, my colleague, Rosie Kirchbaum McBrown, um, who's our microbiome expert, Dr. Richard Fry, who led one of the two sites. Um, I led the other site, and Dr. Jessica Mitchell, who is one of our um, uh, f other physicians, and of course my colleague, uh, Kim, who's going to cover some of the microbiome. Um, we need to make a disclosure that um, we have been working for a number of years with, on uh, creating patents and have licensed a number of patents, developed and licensed a number of patents for autism and Pitt Hopkins. We've also been consulting uh, with Finch Therapeutics and have received funding from Finch. Um, and most recently, we went ahead and formed our own company, Gut Brain Access Therapeutics, based on the very positive results of this study and our other studies. We want to move ahead to get MTT approved for autism. And the best way to do that, we felt, was to form our own company. In the last few months, we've been very successful in raising funding for many families, but still looking for additional funding to move ahead even faster. Um, I do need to point out MTT is an investigational treatment, not yet approved by the FDA for autism. But uh, FMT has been approved. Uh, two FMT drugs have been approved for um, C. difficile infections, which involves life-threatening diarrhea, which is actually very positive to know that the FDA is approving microbiota therapeutics. Um, so just a quick summary of our first study for anyone who's not familiar with it. In our first study, we found that a microbiota transplant was very successful in greatly reducing GI symptoms, 80% reduction. Um, 16 of 18 children had great improvement uh, during the treatment. Eight weeks after follow-up, uh, those benefits remained. 17 of 18 children had improved. Then we weren't planning it, but three different families told us that their child was doing better a year later. So we did a two-year follow-up, two years post-treatment, and most of the GI benefits were holding. Uh, one child had been on antibiotics and lost GI benefits. A couple kids were not on great diets. But what was even more interesting was that the autism symptoms not only maintain, but continue to improve, with most families just reporting the child was better able to learn, better able to learn language and social interaction and behavior. So at the start of the study, 80% of them, over 80% had severe autism. And again, that's because GI symptoms, which were a requirement to be in the study, are associated with more severe autism. And two years post-treatment, we were down to less than 20% in the severe range, 40% in the mild to moderate range, and 45% below the cutoff for autism. They still had symptoms, and again, this is an open, was an open label trial. But it was very positive, and the FDA awarded us fast track status based on just this phase one study. Um, so now I wanna tell you about our new phase two study for adults with autism. It's a randomized, double blind, placebo controlled study in part one. So in part one, group A receives vancomycin pretreatment to kill off harmful bacteria, and then a bowel cleanse to remove the vancomycin and to remove most of the remaining bacteria, and then eight weeks of microbiota. Group B receives only the bowel cleanse because you know if you've had a bowel cleanse or not. That's, there's no placebo effect for that. Um, then part two is an open label extension. So group A received an eight, extra eight weeks of microbiota, and group B was then switched to just the bowel cleanse and the microbiota without the vancomycin, because the FDA wanted to know if vancomycin was needed or not. So they asked us to add that in. And then we did observation of them for 18 months. Uh, we collect, just finished collecting the last of the 18 month data, so I'm only gonna be showing you the part one and part two data uh, today. But um, the exciting news is we had very few dropouts, three dropouts just due to lack of interest on the part of the adult. The parents wanted to stay in the study. Um, there was one withdrawal due to medication error by the participant. They took the medications in the wrong order, unfortunately. We had only one withdrawal due to a possible adverse effect. A child uh, fainted uh, when they had missed breakfast and they were in a grocery store one morning. 
taken by an ambulance um, to the ER. On the, way, on the ambulance, on the way there, they woke up, they were doing fine. The ER doc said they were fine. They wanted to, said it was fine to continue them in the study. The family wanted to continue in the study. We felt it was fine to continue them, but the, our IRB said no, we had to remove them. So we did have to remove one person because of an episode either involving fainting or a possible absent seizure. So very high completion rate, 51 out of 56 people. Um, the adverse effects were generally similar, similar to or less than placebo. We had no serious adverse effects, no AEs that were even potentially life-threatening. The blood safety tests um, suggested very good safety, no clinically significant concerns. With vancomycin, there were slightly more adverse effects than placebo, 52 versus 46. Um, the most common adverse effects were just temporary worsening of existing symptoms hyperactivity or irritability, usually just for a few days. In the microbiota portion of the study, we actually had many fewer adverse effects than placebo in the treatment group in 36 versus 53, and they actually were substantially lower severity. So the bottom line is that adults with autism can have their good days and bad days. And on our treatment, they had fewer bad, day, fewer bad GI days, fewer bad autism symptom days. So that was very, very encouraging to see that the treatment seems to be safer than placebo. In terms of outcome measures, a primary outcome measure was the CARS, very widely used, and some of the secondary measures, the daily stool record, the SRS, and the aberrant behavior checklist. Um, so in the CARS, we did see that the treatment group in blue received, improved more than the um, placebo group in orange during the first um, 10 weeks of the study. But then when they received an additional eight weeks of treatment, they saw greater improvement. So this turns out was an, unfortunately a flaw in our study design that adults took longer to improve than children to reach maximum improvement. So in our child study, children had improved in about five weeks in terms of GI symptoms and about 10 weeks in terms of autism symptoms. But for the adults with autism, it took longer and in hindsight, maybe we should have expected that because they've had those GI symptoms for longer. Uh, but at the end of part two, we saw greater improvement in the treatment group when they received an extra eight weeks of treatment. And the orange group, whereas in part one, they were on placebo, in part two, when they were switched to the real treatment, they improved as well. So in part one alone, we had a p-value of 0.06, it's very encouraging, and a medium effect size. Now, I forgot to mention that we had planned the study for 84 participants, but because COVID hit and our finances uh, struck us, we had to decrease our sample size. So we focused more on the uh, effect size and the p-values, but still the p-values are pretty reasonable. So part one, p of 0.06. If you look at um, combining groups and the end of part two versus placebo, you get a p of 0.0001. So a large effect when you look at later times. But we do have to break the blind at the end of part one. So it's an open label extension because people know if they're getting, uh, again, the uh, bio cleanser, bowel cleanse or not. For daily stool record, we count the number of days out of 14 days in which they have an abnormal day reported as a day of no stool, hard stool, uh, soft or liquid stool, or diarrhea, four stools or more or requiring use of a GI medication like a laxative or enema, or significant pain. And we saw that the treatment group in Part A had a 38% reduction in DSR versus 17% for placebo, P of 0.05, medium effect size. And then in Part 2, that, um, the, those benef GI benefits held for the treatment group, and um, the placebo group, when they were switched to the real treatment, improved a little bit more. The major improvements were in days of pain. And so if we see here, the treatment group had an 85% reduction in days of pain versus the placebo group, 41%. Um, and then in part two, not too much additional change that those benefits were lasting for the um, treatment group. And also there were substantial improvements in the days of soft stool, um, which were a, a major problem for many of the children. 73% reduction for group A versus 21% for placebo. 
of 0.09, and then um, the treat again in part two, the treatment benefits held when we continue treating group A, and more improvement in group B when they were switched to the real treatment. In social responsiveness scale, we heard a little bit about that from the previous talk. Uh, there was some improvement in part one, so the treatment group improved almost twice as much as placebo, but a small effect size uh, P of 0.2, uh, so effect size of 0.2. Um, but then in, when we continued treatment, again, it took a little longer, then we saw much more improvement in the SRS in the treatment group, and the placebo group saw great improvement when they were switched to the placebo as well. So if we combine the groups at end of part two versus the placebo in part one, we get a P of 0 0.009 and a medium to large effect size. Um, in the aberrant behavior checklist, in part one, both groups improved, and in the placebo group did improve slightly more than the treatment group in part one, but in part two, both groups improved further. Um, so if we look at both groups at the end of part two, uh, compared to placebo in part one, we get a P of 0.097, uh, small to medium effect size. Um, and finally, looking at the PGIA, this is a measure of 20 different autism symptoms. We see the treatment group improves almost twice as much as the placebo in part one, um, and then, but not statistically significant. And then in part two, there's greater improvement for the treatment group and greater improvement for the placebo when they switch to the real treatment. And again, we get a small to medium effect size when we look at parts, uh, combined part two versus part one. This is averaging over every one of 20 autism symptoms, but some symptoms improved much more than others. So briefly, I won't go through this in gory detail, but blue is the percentage improvement in a symptom for the treatment group at the end of part two versus the placebo in part one. So we see, for example, 65% reduction in tantrums versus 20% for placebo. Big improvements also in other areas, GI and stools, aggression, hyperactivity, uh, mood, et cetera. For every measure we looked at, there was greater improvement in the treatment group than placebo, and many of those uh, changes were significant or marginally significant. Um, so to summarize, this is a very rigorous study. This is a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled in part one. And then in part two, we did open-label extension and learned that additional treatment was even more beneficial. We learned that it was extremely safe, similar to what we have found in our other three studies. Uh, we found it was very safe, and we found that the group receiving the microbiota capsules had fewer and less severe effects than placebo. So very, very encouraging, and no problems at all on the blood safety test. And we found it was very effective, that the treatment group improved more than placebo on the primary outcome, the CARS-2 with a P of 0.06 just for part one, more, high, more significant in part two, and also in the DSR, P of 0.05. Um, and so we had additional improvements in part two. So this study actually involved four different dosing strategies. Um, so we investigated four different ways to treat with and without vancomycin, uh, with and with eight weeks versus 16 weeks, and we actually used two different ways of doing the maintenance dose. For a most effective dosing strategy, we found we went from um, uh, severe autism down to moderate autism at the end of treatment to mild autism 18 months post-treatment. So the results are easily strong enough to justify a phase three study. We have learned from this several important things that adults take longer to treat than children do. So we need to have that phase one arm be longer when we include adults. And we've also learned that um, because this is such a safe medication and we need to learn more about optimal dosing, it makes very good sense to go up to higher dosing strategies to see if we can have even more improvement than we've observed here. So um, we're going to next plan on doing a dosing study um, to investigate going to higher and more frequent dosing. And we expect that that should lead uh, to continued good safety and perhaps better effect than we've observed here. So again, I've shown you the average of four different um, treatment regimens, but one of them was especially good.
And so that's our main hope. Now let me turn it over to my colleague to tell you more about the microbiome part, which is pretty much immune from placebo effect. Thanks. So uh, looking at the microbiome part in autism, uh, there are a couple of uh, studies, even uh, including our uh, phase one study where we have seen consistently that uh, bifidobacterium and some other beneficial bacteria were lacking in, in uh, kids with autism, where and some other studies have mentioned that uh, some other bacteria like harmful, like clostridia, have been dominated in kids with autism. So different studies with the different other findings. Uh, but we are, uh, what we have learned from our MTT study is that uh, the success behind our MTT study is that the MTT elim uh, eliminates the harmful bacteria that can cause, or their metabolites can cause different kind of GI issues. And also it helps to grow the beneficial or commensals that can produce a different uh, uh, beneficial uh, metabolites or, or like salt and fatty acids uh, that comes from the healthy uh, uh, and carefully, carefully uh, screened uh, donors. So looking at uh, our uh, uh, microbiome data here for adults with autism, uh, this uh, graph shows that uh, we, we use this uh, with the beta diversity matrix to calculate the distance from donor. It means after MTT, how close they get to the, to the donors. So here, lower number is better. So if you see here on for the group A, from the baseline to uh, uh, vancomycin time points, the, their uh, distance become uh, significantly uh, bigger. So that makes sense because they went through vancomycin. But after MTT, uh, part one and part two, uh, this distance become uh, significantly lower. It means they become more closer to donors. That, that is great news to see that how uh, the microbial profile of these adults with autism, their profile after MTT becomes so similar to donors. But if you see for the group B, uh, we didn't see much change during the, until the MTT one, and uh, because they were in the placebo uh, part here. But as soon as they got treated uh, here MTT two, their uh, distance also significantly decreased. That says that uh, they become similar to donors. But if we compare from group B and A for the MTT part two, uh, you can see here clearly that the MTT part two from uh, uh, group A had a significant uh, closer to donors compared to group A. So that indicates that probably we need vancomycin for better uh, improvement in the microbiome profile as well as probably the, for the engraftment. Uh, this slide is a bit of uh, uh, busy, but before we jump into this slide, uh, I would like you to know that for adults with autism, we had two different kind of donors. Uh, one donor came from University of Minnesota, which represent UMN, and the second donor came from uh, Finch Therapeutics. So this plot is a 2D plot for the beta diversity, and what we are seeing here is that the baseline uh, participants, uh, after vancomycin, they clustered together and they move towards the, their corresponding donors. As we can see here, the human recipient uh, uh, move towards the human drug donors. So that is really indicate that the donor is how important it is. The another major important message that we get from here is that uh, the vancomycin is very important uh, to shift their microbiome profile uh, towards the donor, which we didn't observe here for the placebo group as all donors uh, 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 accumulated here. And uh, this is one of the bacteria that has been consistently found in many different studies, even in phase one study, that uh, bifidobacter has been lacking or lower abundance at the baseline. And what we are seeing in adults with autism that at the base, after baseline, they, their uh, abundance significantly decreased with the vancomycin, which makes sense. But uh, after the uh, uh, MTT, their abundance significantly increased. And you can see that the uh, average of the donor is, is uh, from there actually it's, it's larger than that, uh, which we didn't see much effect in the uh, group A, even though when they got treated, we saw only little effect. So one message here also says that uh, the only difference between group A and B after treatment is uh, vancomycin. So probably vancomycin is important here uh, for the better improvement. So just to summarize in a, uh, this short uh, uh, part of the microbiome is that the vancomycin changed the diversity of this microbiome, uh, but MTT is the one which is restoring the uh, microbiome from these adults with autism after MTT, and uh, it's shifting towards the donor's profile. And uh, some of the ba beneficial bacteria that we have seen is bifidobacterium that have been significantly increased. Uh, and the most important uh, uh, take-home message for us from here is uh, 
that pre-treatment with vancomycin, I think is important to see the greater improvement uh, in this adults with autism. And uh, soon we'll have more data for the, uh, for the long term follow up, which is like almost one and a half year. So I hope that we can share soon uh, in future. Thank you. Thanks, Kim. So um, if, one thing I'll mention also briefly in just one slide is we did a second, another study, a third MTT study for children with Pitt Hopkins. Pitt Hopkins is a very rare single gene disorder involving very severe autism um, and other symptoms. Uh, but the worst part of it is these children have even worse GI symptoms than those with autism. Very severe constipation, uh, can even be life-threatening and has led to deaths even. Um, so we found that for this small study we did of six children with Pitt Hopkins, we found it was very safe, minimal adverse effects. Uh, one child had one day of um, flatulence and that was it. Um, and a very a general, very well tolerated and very effective in terms of GI symptoms, 80% reduction in GI symptoms in part one versus 30% for placebo, pain, 90% reduction in the horrific pain these children were in versus 29% for placebo, uh, averaging over 29 uh, Pitt Hopkins symptoms, um, the, again, more than twice as the improvement in the, than in the placebo group, very relevant to autism, perhaps, is that we also found that the kids with Pitt Hopkins had very severe, very major decrease in their mitochondrial functioning in complex four. And we saw that there was a big improvement in the treatment, in the treatment group, 26%, versus minus 1% for placebo. So this suggests that at least in Pitt Hopkins, much of the mitochondrial problems are due to gut bacterial toxins, and I suspect the same is true for autism, and we are waiting for the results from the MITO lab to, uh, for the autism studies. And also we found a very high in Grafman, 20% um, versus 1% for, for placebo. Um, and so uh, again, oh, I forgot to mention that also when we stopped treating, the benefits continued at three months, and uh, some participants we followed at six months, uh, benefits continued or even con improved more as time went on. So very similar uh, results just for this small, rare group. So I want to thank the many different families who have supported us, um, the funding we've received from many different groups we greatly appreciate, our wonderful research team and uh, Finch Therapeutics and the team at University of Minnesota for their, um, uh, and their staff for providing us with the uh, these very special microbiota capsules. So with that, we're happy to take any questions if there's